Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to my course aspects of biochemical engineering. The, I was discussing one very important aspects of biochemical engineering that is the medium sterilization. Previously I discussed the air sterilization and I told you that uh, sterilization uh, plays very important role as where biochemical industry is concerned because we shall have to uh, make the environment totally free from the uh, other microorganisms so that our desired microorganism can grow. In the last uh, lecture, I tried to discuss the, uh, 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 the pr principles behind the medium sterilization process and I told you that two type of techniques may be used for medium sterilization process. One is filtration and other is the heat. You know, when we use the filtration process, Filtration appears to be the to be the best method. The reason is that that you know there is no denaturation of a nutrient uh, present in the media. So, but when you heat, obviously uh, some kind of denaturation of the or uh, some kind of uh, uh, that loss of nutrient uh, might be uh, might take taken place. So, but the problem is that when we use any kind of filtration process, particularly uh, membrane filtration we have we have seen that across the membrane there is a tremendous pressure drop and as you know that uh, any kind of operation cost any kind of that you know depends on the the pressure drop you know, if the pressure drop is more operation cost will be more so so not only that uh, membrane uh, since the pressure increases because since the pore size of the membrane is less than 0.5 microns because if we target to remove bacterial cells, we know the size of the bacteria varies from 0.5 to uh, 2 microns. So naturally, that that you know the pressure drop across the membrane will be very high, and since it is very high, and your membrane material mostly based on the polymeric material, am I right? And polymeric material they cannot withstand very high pressure because if, though we put uh, some kind of supporting uh, material uh, perforated disc uh, above and uh, below this membrane, but we find that you know made the life of the membrane depends on the pressure difference as well as the fouling of the membrane that is another important factor that we have. So, uh, for that you know that uh, uh, I told you that when you uh, think about the biochemical industry we have come across two different type of products one is high value products and this is low value products. High value products means per unit cost of the product is, is very high. I, I can give, uh, give you the example of uh, uh, that, uh, that hepatitis B vaccine, then we have in, uh, insulin, then we have canamycin. These are very uh, canamycin antibiotics, they are very costly uh, medicines. But uh, if you if you if you if you go, go for the liar that uh, low value products as for as alcohol, citric acid, acetic acid, all are low value products. So in case of low value products, we have to handle huge volume of the liquid, and when we use the huge volume of the liquid, it's very difficult to use the membrane type of filter. But when we use small amount of liquid, small amount of media, we will handle. Then we th think for some kind of filtration techniques. Uh, so, in the industry, in the biochemical industry, mostly we use the heat uh, here as a media for stay, for removing all the microorganisms. I told you when you heat, then uh, what is happening? The protein inside the micro microbial cells then undergo denaturation, and due to denaturation of the protein, the biochemical activity of the organism will be lost and your organism will be killed. Now, now the, when, when, you, when you go for heating, because why oh, in case of media sterilization, why you use the heating, one of the important reasons is that water is good conductor of heat. 
because in case of we have seen in case of air sterilization process we we don't use this heat because the air is non conductor of heat now when we consider the heat we find that uh, the removal of the organism that depends uh, this is this follow the first order kinetics we have come across the thermal death rate constant and we also come across one parameter called decimal reduction time and if you look at the decimal reduction time and the uh, thermal death rate constant they are inversely proportional to each other and we have seen as you increase the temperature the kd value or thermal death rate constant that will increase uh, very high so your <laughs> decimal reduction type decreases drastically now uh, in our lab we use 121 degree centigrade uh, temperature for 15 minutes for sterilization purpose but the industry uh, we use usually we use 140 degree centigrade that is hardly 1 to 2 minutes uh, for the sterilization for uh, that is the retention time of the liquid in the holding section so <coughs> so this is because we have to, we have seen that you know that high temperature short time technique that is usually followed for med medium sterilization process one important reason is that vitamin and amino acid they they denatured they deactivated at very <laughs> low temperature that is why deactivation energy of this uh, vitamin amino acid within the range of 80 to 90 kilojoules per mole and whereas in case of uh, microorganisms as high as 300 to 400 microjoules per mole so it is quite high because so at a high temperature it is more detrimental on the death of the microorganism rather than the the vitamin and amino acid because vitamin and amino acid that will be deactivated even at the low temperature so that is why HTST technique is used because we are holding the media for a very short time so that loss of the media quality will be very less now when you go for the sterilization process we find two type of sterilization process is available with us one is called batch sterilization and another is continuous sterilization process the batch sterilization process is suitable when you work with a very small volume of the liquid but when you go for the high volume of the liquid the batch sterilization is no good because the reason is that time required for the sterilization process is very high so as you know in the industry not only time requirement but also the amount of steam that is consumed in in case of continuous sterilization process is drastically reduced so both the factors plays very important role as per industry is concerned now when you go for the continuous sterilization process we come across two type of continuous sterilization process one is direct steam injection and another is uh, parallel plate heat ex exchanger now direct heat steam injection process appears to be the best one because instantaneously temperature rises to 140 degrees centigrade there is no lack of heating or heating that take place and then you can keep the media the, in the holding section for for a desired amount of time and and then do the flash cooling uh, to reduce the temperature but uh, but the problem is that since you are directly injecting the steam with the media there is a possibility of condensation of the steam with the media and since the condensation of the steam take place in the media the, the viscosity as well as the density of the media will be changed and we know the flow characteristics of the fluid depends on the on the density and the viscosity of the media so it will be very difficult to maintain the temperature of the uh, sterilizer Th that is that is that is in other way that is the op operational problem that we will be facing and that is why we industry we usually follow the plate parallel plate heat exchanger it is very simple we have three different ex heat exchanger one heat exchanger we consider as the economizer because we preheat the media with the uh, and the heating media here the outgoing and the uh, temperature of the uh, of the sterilization liquid and then we we increase the temperature with the help of steam and 140 then we put it in the holding section for the desired period of time then finally after <coughs> after economize that it passes through the chiller to reduce the uh, temperature of the media to the desired temperature so <coughs> this is the this is the things i i discuss um, in the last lecture that today i want to discuss some kind of 
numerical problems involved with this particular process because particularly we are interested uh, to find out that how we can find out the temperature of the sterilizer that you know we will find out or any other related parameters with this particular process. Let us, let us try for that. Now, first problem that I want to do is uh, tell you this is one fifteen cubic meter of chemostat is operated with dilution rate of 0 0.1 hour inverse. The a continuous sterilizer with steam injection with uh, steam uh, with steam injection and flash cooling delivered uh, the sterilized media to the fermenters. The media is in the holding section of the sterilizer is maintaining 1 for 30 degree centigrade. That is the holding section I told you previously it is 140 degree centigrade, but in this problem they mention 130 degree centigrade. The concentration of the contaminants of the raw material is 10 to the power uh, 5 per milliliter and acceptable contamination risk of one organism every 3 months. I told you that whenever we 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 do for we work for any kind of sterilization process. We always uh, we have a basis. Basis is the how much contaminant you are allowing with respect to how much of organism. Now here in this problem, they are saying that raw material contains 10 to the power 5 uh, the number of cells per milliliter and acceptable contamination risk is one organism every three months operation. So, we can easily find out we know the flow rate that we can find out how much organism uh, out of uh, how much organism uh, one organism will be allowing in this particular sterilization process. The RNAs constant and activation energy for the thermal death, <coughs> death uh, the death rate constant are estimated to be <coughs> this uh, the, the, the two value is given respectively and sterilization sterilizer pipe inner diameter is 12 centimeter and assume the perfect plug flow determine the length of the holding section. So, this is the problem that we, uh, uh, we have given and let us see how we can solve this problem. So, as I as I as I pointed out before that when we try to solve the problem first we should jot down what are the parameters is given. This is the volume this is uh, 15 cubic meter dilution rate is 1.1 our inverse activation that RNAs constant 7.5 10 to the power 39 our inverse E d is the deactivation energy required is 288.5 kilojoules per gram mole and temperature is 130 degree centigrade and diameter of the tube is 12 centimeter. So, we shall have to write down all these things. Now, if you look at the dilution rate how you define dilution rate? Dilution rate equal to F by V. Now, here so, I can write f by v is there. So, we, we can write f equal to the d into v. Am I right? This, this is already what is written here. So, d we know the dilution rate, we know the volume. So, we can find out the uh, volumetric flow rate of the liquid. The linear velocity how you can calculate suppose in the pipeline this uh, liquid is flowing. This is 1.5 cubic meter per hour. It is flowing like this. So, we if you if you know the cross sectional area this a if you divide by a then cross sectional area then it will be what will be the unit meter per hour that I can I can do that. So, this is exactly what we have done this is this is uh, this is the flow rate and this is the cross sectional area pi r squared and and this the diameter is 12 centimeter and 12 centimeter is equal to what 0.12 meter am I right this is in cubic meter. So, um, radius will be 0 0.06 uh, meter. So, this is square and uh, your uh, velocity is coming about 132.62 meter per hour. Now, um, we know the Arrhenius equation what is the Arrhenius equation? Arrhenius equation is k d equal to e to the power a into e to the power e d by r t that is what, what is given here am I right. A is the RNAs constant e d is the deactivation 
energy requirement h r is the gas content con constant and t is the temperature of sterilization so every all parameters are given here so we can easily calculate what is the uh, death rate constant now once we know the de death rate constant now uh, we know the e equation that what is the equation that we have i told you this is dn by dt equal to k d into n am i right so this is equal to d n by n equal to k d into d t so this is n 0 to n and this is 0 to t d ok or you know what you holding holding time t so we can write this is equal to k d into t and what if we can write here ln n by n 0 and this is minus. So, I can write ln n 0 by n equal to k d into t. So, time will be what time equal to, equal to ln n 0 by n divided by k d. So, we can this is what we have written here. Okay. So, so first we shall have to find out what is the value of n 0 am I right the how we can find out n 0 the 3 month operation 3 month operation means how many days it is the third 90 90 days 90 days how much hours will be there 90 into 24 in the, in the hours and this is the flow rate 1.3 uh, cubic meter so if you multiply by this you will get that uh, that you know that how much uh, how much volume of the liquid we shall have to sterilize and from that we you know how much cell that you know con concentration of the organisms that is there and if you multiply that we will find that how much total microorganism present in the in the, in the media and in 10 months 3 months period so <coughs> this we can consider as n0 am i right or n1 n1 or n0 whatever you have and then we can put this value and this out of 1 a n n value will be 1 n 2 or n 2 value is 1 n 1 value is this and uh, this k d value already we uh, uh, determine. So, we can easily find out what is the time required for the sterilization that holding time that is required in the sterilization that we can easily calculate. Now, our our problem is something different our problem is that that you know that we are that we are injecting the stream this is media and here is the stream am I right. Then it is coming to the holding section this is holding section. So, uh, question come here this holding section we have we, we want to maintain the temperature 130 degree centigrade. Now, question comes that how what should be the length of this holding section. So, how you can find out we know the velocity uh, velocity that u and time required in this holding section and this. So, velocity is what is the unit at the meter per unit time and if you if you if you multiply it by time then time time will cancel then we will get the length of the length of the holding section. So, we will be getting about 14.2 meters. So, it is very very easily we can find out the length of the holding section of a particular sterilizer. Now, let us go to the an another problem I think if you if you if you look at this problem I think your conception will be little bit better that uh, the media at a flow rate Two, this is a continuous sterilization 2 cubic meter per hour is to be sterilized by heat exchanger with a steam in a continuous sterilizer. The liquid contains the bacterial spores at a concentration 5 into 10 to the power 12 per cubic meter. The activation energy and the Arrhenius constant for thermal destruction of these contaminants are 283 kilojoules gram mole per gram mole and 5.7 into 10 to the power 39 per hour respectively. At a contamination risk one survival 
every 60 days operation is considered acceptable because in the last uh, problem we we have we have 3 days uh, 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 and here it is it is uh, it is uh, uh, in the last problem uh, that we we try to find out how much population is there with 3 months operation we did it i can remember and this is also similar to that 60 days so a contamination risk one organism survival surviving every 60 days operation the every 60 days operation we are allowing one organism to percolate through this air fair the sterilizer and the the sterilizer pipe has an inner diameter of 0.1 meter and length of the holding section is 24 centimeter when the last problem you can remember we 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 try to find out what is the length of the holding section now here the length of the holding section is given this is 24 centimeter and density of the media is 100 kg per cubic meter is same as water and viscosity is 3.6 kg per meter per hour what we shall have to find out the sterilization, sterilization temperature that is required for this sterilizing the media so this problem is little bit different as compared to the previous problem now let us see how we can do that the desired level of cell destruction is 60 days so like you know previously we try to solve it 60 days uh, operation that we have and what is the flow rate 2 cubic meter per hour then now 2 cubic meter means <coughs> you have to find out per day what is the flow rate the so one day is 24 hours if you multiply by 24 hours you will get um, meter cube per day and then you multiply it by 60 days you will get that how much uh, cubic meter of liquid you are handling and this liquid what is the uh, micron the spore present 5 into uh, 10 to the power 12 so if you multiply that so you get this n1 value <coughs> is uh, 1.44 into 10 to the power 12 now if you want to calculate n1 by n2 what will be this this will be 1.44 into 10 to the power 16 divided by 1 there is the ratio is like this so we can easily find out the ratio between n1 and n2 this is exactly this so we we here it is done in other way n2 by n1 so you divide by this and we get this this ratio as 6.9 into 10 to the power 17 now uh, then the question comes so what is the uh, the flow rate is given 2 cubic meter per hour and cross that diameter of the tube also given 0.1 meter. So, here you, what is the u? u equal to flow rate divided by area. Am I right? What is the flow rate is 2 cubic meter per hour and area is two pi r square. The and that you know that uh, if 0.1 meter is the diameter of the tube, so radius will be 0.1 divided by 2. So, if you do that, we will get 254 meter per hour this is the uh, velocity of the fluid now if you know the velocity of the fluid we can calculate the reynolds number what is the reynolds number d u rho by mu so you know that uh, this is the diameter of the tube this is the velocity of the fluid this is the density this is the viscosity so easily we can easily calculate the reynolds number Now, uh, one thing is that uh, that if you know the Reynolds number, then we, we can find out the respective value of uh, dz. This is uh, this is what dz u by dz u by d. Now, what is dz is the axial dispersion coefficient. Am I right? Use the velocity of the fluid, and um, d is the di diameter of the tube. So you know that uh, this you can easily find out. The respective value you can find out this is what we have done here that uh, dz by uh, this uh, at this particular Reynolds number that uh, seven, 7 point uh, so something it is close to this that we shall have to find out where it is we can find out this ratio and once we do, do that this is the this is this then dz value the axial dispersion coefficient we can easily calculate and this will come about uh, about 16.6 uh, .6 square meter per hour and once you know that then this is the picklet number what is picklet number 
u l by dz where the u is the velocity of the fluid l is the length of the holding section and dz is the axial dispersion coefficient so if you put all these values we will get the picklet number the once we know the picklet number then we can find out then what we can find out now here we can see that the that here if we we have already the value of uh, n2 by n2 by n1 am i right about 10 to the power minus 17 and if you know the picklet number we have different slope with their different picklet number so we can we can find out suppose the uh, picklet number if it is 70 so it is coming like this so you can easily find out the damp cooler number so <coughs> So here, uh, what we can we can do we can we can find out this damp cooler number value, and from that we can find out the KD value. This KD value we can find out the U d, d, d a by uh, L. So you have all the values here. The so this uh, this value that from the plot what you get plot into by n one. So versus. Uh, 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 this is uh, this is what this is the uh, what we have damp cooler number damp cooler number equal to what k d l by u am i right k d is the death rate constant now you have this value so we can easily find out what is the rest and this value is coming about 42 this is 42 and then if we put this value we can find out the value of k d k d is the thermal death rate constant is the 445 Point six hour inverse. Then now let us use the Arrhenius equation. What is the Arrhenius equation? K d equal to a into e to the power e a e d by r t. Now t equal to this divided by this. All values are given. You just put the value. You can find out like this. Now another way we can if you suppose. We don't have uh, the we we unable to estimate the KD value. Uh, no, we we estimate the KD value there, but uh, we um, uh, uh, we we don't have the other values. That is, ED value is not there. Then then if we have the correlation between uh, KD and uh, T value, that as the how the KD value. This suppose the KD value with respect to temperature, T temperature. How it is uh, changes with respect to temperature. So if you know the k d value then from the plot uh, the plot uh, from the graph also we can find out the temperature of sterilization so this is the two way we can find out the temperature of sterilization it is not very difficult so uh, in this particular uh, uh, lecture i try to solve uh, two numerical problems on uh, st st uh, that uh, medium sterilization uh, one uh, problem deals with that we shall have to find out the length of the holding section um, but that means how long you want to maintain the temperature of the sterilization and uh, here the temperature of sterilization was uh, 100 uh, 130 degrees centigrade and next case or next problem deals with that how you can find out the temperature of sterilization and also we can if you know the temperature of sterilization and we can we can also find out how much heat required for the sterilization process because you know that also we can uh, estimate it thank you very much